Hi guys, I'm uh, Christian Wiedewart from Germany. We have this thing called poutine. You, you know what poutine is? It's brown gravy, okay? Uh, sliced up spring onions. There's many ways of making it, but sliced up. We want to treat karate practical. The, the remastered <laughs> video is going to be crazy. Yeah, absolutely. I love it when like-minded people get together. I, I oh, love yeah. teaching. I, lo I love to bring karate as an art forward. You guys ready? Let's bring them on. So let me, let's get into your training background. So I'd like you to talk about, uh, you know, your training background, your styles, combat sports that you've done. Go for it. Yeah, the truth is I have no degrees in any other art as karate. Uh -huh. So, I started karate when I was 13 years old. Um, oh, wow. And That's I was, young. I, yeah, and I was um, even looking earlier for some karate thing. Uh, why? <laughs> it was the end of the 80s. Huh? Karate kid and all those stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I was young. And to be honest, I just wanted, wanted to be able to move that way. And. Uh -huh. Um, I like this Karate Kid story. Yes. So, um, my parents were busy then and um, they allowed me to travel all alone with an age of 10 to go with, um, with a train to Cologne uh, all alone to find a dojo train there and I came home too late and they said it's not the right time now. And so um, I didn't learn Karate then. And Three years later, I came across the information that there's a dojo right into my city. So, and I went there by bike. I arrived there and it was home from the very first moment. Yes. Everyone, the sensei, every member um, greeted me like friends. Uh, the, behave the behavior was perfectly friendly. The environment was great. Um, and everyone was gentle. From the adult to the kid, from the youth to everyone, from the professor to the to the street worker, that was home. That was what I was really looking for, I think so. And um, I went there every day. I trained five times a week. Wow. Um, some some so weeks long. or months later, yeah. uh, with the yellow belt, I went to the first tournament um, seven times a week. Karate was everywhere and every time I trained at home alone and, and so on and so on and so on. Um, yeah, and so karate was number one. And over the years, I learned some judo, some jujitsu, some kickboxing, some boxing, uh, a little bit of Aikido. Mm. Um, and I didn't do some tests there, no degrees. But I went there and got information. You put it that way, cross-training. Yes. I went there to, to learn, to shut my mouth, get information and put everything together what I can get and uh, enrich my karate with it. And um, yeah, one day I met another trainer from, from another dojo 20 kilometers away. And um, he said, come to my dojo and I make, I, I will help you to, to become a good competition fighter. And uh, he was one of the best trainers of those days in Germany. And um, he helped me to win some tournaments. It was a great time. I'm very thankful for this. And um, I fought in several countries, not with those big oh, titles. Wow. I, yeah, I didn't 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 uh, win big titles, but it was a very um, interesting time to fly to other countries to <laughs> to live like a rock star. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the Friday road. into the plane. Yeah, on the road into the plane to the hotel. Um, the next morning into the gym fighting. In the evening to the restaurant and the discotheque, and after that to the hotel and morning into the plane. So. You didn't see anything of those countries, 
only airports and um, tournament halls. Uh, but that was a great that was a great time, and um, I don't want to miss this um, experience. I'm uh, I'm envious because uh, when I was ten, I I my well yeah ten I started. My dad put me uh, in in karate for 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 a long time. Uh, when I got a little older, maybe at twelve, um, uh, we had a Canadian national competition and things, and I was training on the team on the Canadian team at our club. But uh, uh, my dad didn't want me to go because he didn't want me to get hurt. So he was protecting me, and so when I look back, I, I, there's one side of me that that that's that gets angry at him. I really wish I had that tournament experience. Um, and then the the other side, you know, when I matured, I was thinking, okay, my dad's just, you know, he, he just cares about me, type of thing. Mm. But uh, you know, I see all my friends, uh, you know, getting that competition experience. It's so important, I find. Like so, uh, that's why I joined uh, a combat sport gyms and. Got a chance to do lots of lots and lots of sparring, different kinds of sparring. So, I when, when I hear your story, uh, um, I, I really appreciate that. Um, what would be some of your favorite arts and or combat sports? Ah, in addition to karate, yeah, um, I found out that um, I like tonfa, but um, even more, I like eskrima. I scream out, okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I, lo- I like okay. the rhythm, I like the moves, and you can use everything without a stick, and it's completely karate then. Yeah. So, um, I, I like that, but I have virtually no time to study something else uh, besides my normal daytime job, besides all the things uh, karate, uh, in, in karate needs to be done with all the media stuff and training plans and uh, training itself and online courses, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, have no, I have no time, but if I could, I would uh, choose one of those. Oh, for sure. I, uh, we've got something in common because uh, FMA, it, I love FMA. I, I met an FMA instructor a couple of years ago. Um, shout out to Guru Terence. Um, I don't know if he's watching, but I'll, I'm gonna send him send him this link later on when we repurpose it. He he got me into FMA. Um, I just love the the biomechanical crossover. I mean, that that's why I love cross training. Like when I see when I see uh, stick disarms. Like for example, one of the stick disarms is like you know you cross your hands and you you you, you shred the stick. Um, or you know they do uh, the open hands. You know when they do the the bypasses, the who buds, mm-hmm. the the checks, the chops, the the open hand strikes, the dirty boxing, <laughs> the parrying, all that stuff, man. Um, when I <laughs> when I look at that, I'm like, I'm thinking, oh my god, kata here, kihon here. Like I'm I'm making all these interconnections, right? So I don't know what's your experience. Like why why did you kind of favor FMA? Yeah, I think I can totally agree with you. It is mm. this cross experience it is the same movement um, I remember when I when I began to learn karate my first trainer told me that a healthy human body um, all over the world is able to move the same way and mm. so on different places on the world different arts are developed in a different way but the movements are similar Yes. Only the, um, the they are specialized in something else. Yes. So and Bingo. so you see someone moving with a stick and the other one without a stick, and um, it is similar. It, it only can can be similar. It's, so Love it, brother. you can learn a, a lot of each other by looking to what all the others are doing. Yeah, you see that that's again another huge smile from here to here, right? <laughs> uh, I. I was going to ask you, we, we're, we, I jumped questions here, which is really good. I was going to ask you, are all styles related? Like, I believe we are all related biomechanically. And mm-hmm. basically what differentiates us is context, really. Um, and so, you know, I was going to ask your take on it, but you just answered it. Um, I Like, I just to kind of like play off of that, um, that's my thing, man. That's what Karate Unity for me is all about. Like, I... I, I'm a karate guy born and bred, right? And and that's that's all I do. But the thing is, the more I cross hands and touch hands and, and meet other people, the more I see that we're pretty much 
moving in similar ways, calling things differently, and using mm -hmm. using it in different contexts. That's it. <laughs> you know. That's it. Yeah, and it becomes um, strange if one person um, rules with dogmas and that it is only this right and it can't be that. If you exclude something or if you rule that it is only this right, then it is not art, then it's religion. And um, I don't know if, re if religion is the right word. It, yeah. hasn't, it hasn't to be ruled. It is art and art needs to be free, free in mind and in expression. Yeah. Okay, hold up. Sorry, guys. Needed to jump out for a second and tell you something important. You've reached, in my opinion, the best part of this podcast where Christian talks about dogma, evolution, and growth in karate. Yes, through cross-training. Did I say cross-training? <laughs> okay, let's get back. We have a task in our, in our generation. Our task is to see what's there and develop it further on for the next generation. Yep. I think no, this sure. is absolutely important and with developments it is always the same. It can be wrong, but it can be right as well. And um, one, one thing is always true, if you don't develop and stand still, you don't see new places. You, <laughs> My trainer said to me, if you only follow the footsteps of someone else, you only see places he has seen before. So you need to go new ways, and this is so important. What, what you say that you cross train and see and take information from everywhere and enrich your abilities and create something new. Sometimes you are possibly on the wrong path, but you have tried it. And all the other ones who haven't tried anything, only followed the footsteps of others, are not able to discuss on the same level. This is important. I, I, I concur. One of the main reasons why I'm doing this, talking to you, making content that, and, and I'm telling you, a lot of my content's getting a lot of heat, man. Like in terms of, that is not karate. Uh, why are you playing music in the background? What is this airy fairy, artsy fartsy stuff that you're doing and all this stuff? And I, I, I only just smile because, I mean, me about 15 years ago, I'd get angry, but, but I, I, I'm just smiling because it's, it's informing me that people are actually questioning what they're doing now. Because the, fa the fact that they're seeing this difference, they're, they're, they're questioning it. Like, here's my take, man. You and I, we're, we, we're developing our craft, but we're opening our eyes and our, our eyes and our heart to other ideas. You know, it's like, it's like school, okay? Like, we learn math. We learn math every year from different teachers, but we're still learning math but we're getting different different ways of solving the problem. Uh, we're, we're, we're learning how to be efficient and we're just basically making those interconnections among all our students and growing together. To me, martial arts should be that way, right? So, you, you know, like I, I don't know, it gets me very frustrated when I see people doing the same thing for decades and nothing has changed, right? And, and, and I don't know, what's your take on that? What's your take on that? I'm going to stop talking. It's all about you. <laughs> Just got excited there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, my take on that. Um, yeah. Let me start by the point that someone argues that you play music in the background. Right. Um, that is no betrayal to karate to train the music. Right. It isn't, it isn't either to train without a karate gi. Mm. Um, that is no betrayal. Um, there's no rule. No one has ever written a rule. You have to train in absolutely quietness. You right. don't, you are not allowed to ask your trainer, sensei, shihan, whatever, uh, a question du during a training. And, um, <laughs> yep. It ha there has never been a rule that music is not allowed. I do believe the most important reason the ancient people didn't train with music, um, modern music, is possibly they had no Bluetooth. Yeah. 
And, Pretty much. and an orchestra <laughs> around the corner wouldn't be w would possibly too much effort. Um, we have we have no evidence. Possibly they trained with some instruments to to emphasize a certain rhythm, a certain uh, strength, tempo, or whatever to bring something out of the students because of the music. I do train with music in every single class and I, I on just, uh, virtually every single seminar I teach. Uh, yeah. When I go with, with a plane to some places, um, I don't carry my music with me. But if in this dojo there is a chance to play music, I use this as an instrument. 100%. I love that. Um, you see, if you look, if you look far enough into the history, and trust me, there, there are people on here that know uh, online in general that know history way better than me. Uh, you know, like uh, Ian Abernathy and uh, who else? Uh, uh, Pat McCarthy and the likes, right? Like, I mean, though those guys are, are, are amazing at this kind of stuff, but I'm just starting to see, you know, the little that I know that music is used as a prompting tool, as a metronome, as a, a tool to, to, to drive rhythm, timing, and motion. It's a tool, right? And, and, and so, yep. I, like, it, like, you know, when you look at it from a functional point of view like that, oh my God, you're, you're like, I put on music and I, I, I use my footwork, like I'll, I'll, pl I'll play the music and uh, if there's a beat like boom, 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 and there's something like that, I'm gonna be keeping all my movements tighter because I wanna be able to keep up to that rhythm. So that kind of informs my spatial, differentiation of my legs like I gotta keep my legs tighter I gotta keep my bones more stacked and my guard tighter if I'm gonna keep that rhythm you know and and and, and move like that so I mean people who discard these things I mean it I think we we owe it to 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 them to actually show them the beauty of this and, and that's what drives me like when I see I, I I don't mean to mean it in a negative way but like ignorance like you're actually ignoring the truth when I see ignorance like that I, I, I want to counter it with truth. You know what I mean? I think it is beneficial for everyone to be open-hearted and yeah, open-hearted enough to let everyone do it that way that he or she thinks is the right thing. So if one doesn't like to train with music, he can do it in absolutely quietness. Yeah. I do like music and you express what benefits you put out of your, uh, of listening to music. Um, I have similar reasons. And for those who use music only for fun in the background, just to be a little bit distracted from daily work and to leave daily stress and come into their sports attitude, then why not? That, yeah. That's the point. So I think um, to be a little bit more, uh, less, not more, a little bit less uh, restrict other people against other people. So not to rule and express you don't have to and you are not allowed to. Uh, Peter Considine um, from the UK told me in a discussion we had and uh, I will never forget this sentence. Uh, he said, if you build walls around people, all they want to do is come over this wall. Yeah. So give everyone his freedom to do what he likes to do and don't judge him by how he does. Judge him or her by the quality of the outcome. If it is Beautiful. good, yep. it is right. Yep. What they want, what they need. I will never lose, I'm a beast. If you want it, come and get it.